All right, so another example with a couple parts to it, related rates, the coffee pot. So let's say we've got our cone. Um, and that is dripping into our cylindrical coffee pot. Um, okay, so if I know that, let's say that this has, let's say that's five inches, we'll make that five inches too. Uh, let's say our water, I'll, I'll, I'll show, we could make this 10 inches. Let's say this is six inches high at that point, and I don't know, we'll say this is four inches. All right, so let's say our change in volume is, I don't know, we'll say it's eight centimeters oh we're in inches inches cubed per minute it's trickling out at eight inches cubed per minute okay so question number one how fast is um the pot filling up at those so I know that this is four inches but that's a variable right there I know that this is six inches that's a variable so this is going down that's going up how fast is that increasing at this point all right so we are looking for this we'll call it y the distance right there is y so we're looking for dy dt um, we know that dv dt is 8 um, and it's positive because this is filling up okay so I think we have everything labeled we might have to back up and label something if we forgot about it um, but how fast is the pot filling up um, volume equals um, pi r squared squared times the height well we called our our height y I can call it h I guess I'll leave it as y doesn't matter pi r squared times height okay so this is my r and this actually in this for the cylinder so pi r squared h is the area of the base times the height if you didn't know how to find the volume of a cylinder area of the base times the height um, this is actually a constant the radius is five doesn't matter if it's an inch deep or five inches deep that is always going to be five so it's nice that we can eliminate that it's five squared times y so really our equation comes down to 25 pi y once we have our equation we find our derivative with respect to time so dv dt equals 25 pi dy dt. Uh, dv dt is given, that's 8. dy dt, well that's what we're looking for. So dy dt equals 8 over 25 pi. It's a change in height, so that would be um, inches per minute. Okay, so if you notice, it didn't matter what Y was, which if you think about it, it doesn't matter if it's this tall or this tall. As long as the change in volume is constant, it, this will continue to go up at a constant. Uh, will not go down 
switch up camera. Uh, this one will not go down at a constant rate. So if we wanted to find how fast this is falling at that given time, that's going to create some more work. So I think we'll ask that. Um, and I'm going to kind of do two sheets at the same time. So call this number two. Fast, the height changing in the filter. Okay, here's what we know. Duality, we just found that to be 8 over 225 pi, but that's this y. So I guess we'll call this our height in this time. And my radius. That's actually a variable too, because your radius is changing as uh, the circle gets smaller and smaller. Okay, so if we're going to find uh, how fast this h is changing, we're looking for dh. We know dv dt. We know this change in height, but it's not going to really even help us. Okay, so we're going to start with our volume of a cone. Volume of a cone is one third pi r squared times height. Um, finding the derivative, it would be dv dt equals pi over 3, I'll just float. r squared dh dt plus h 2r dr dt um, we could find r maybe dh dt is what we're looking for dr dt we don't know so we don't know dh dt we don't know dr dt we have too many variables here so we can't solve it as is. So we're going to have to, this is a type of problem where most are not this way. I'm showing you a, a pretty tough problem right now. Like um, most will not require this extra step. Although this coffee pot problem two years ago was on the AP exam. Uh, there is a problem in the book like this that in your assignment. So it's an expectation on the AP exam is you, you would know how to do this type of a problem. This exact problem with different numbers was on the AP exam. Okay, so we have to eliminate a variable. And to do that, we have to find a little equation that relates the variables. So I'm going to make it into similar triangles. Let's see if I can draw this on here. So I've got, imagine this is my triangle right here. And We've got another triangle. All right, I know that this is 10 and this is 5 when this is R and this is H. And these two triangles are similar because they have this, they're the same shape, they have the same angles. So we could say, you know, back into our geometry days, we could say R is to 10. So 5h equals 10r. Now we are looking for dh dt. So we need h in our problem. We need it in our equation. We need h. So we need to eliminate r. So I need to solve for r, divide by 10. So it would be h over 2. So now I can divide by 10. So r is h over 2 in this problem. So I can go back. This was not the right way to do it. We're going to go back to our volume equation. Volume equals pi over 3 r squared h. But now we know that r is h over 2. So pi over 3 h over 2 squared times h. So what do we have? Pi over 12 h cubed. 
is our equation. Now we're ready to find the derivative with respect to time. So dv dt equals pi over 4h squared times dh dt. dv dt, so we're talking about this cone right there. So it's actually trickling out of there, so the volume is decreasing, so that's going to be a negative 8 in this case. Um, our h is given to be 6 at this time. And dh dt is what we're looking for. So whatever, 36 times 4, 144. So what do we have? 140, uh, negative 8 times, wait, oh, it's 36 divided by 4, which is 9. So negative over, negative 8 over 9 pi equals dh dt. My mental math was correct. 36 over 4. All right, so my units would be um, inches per minute. And does it make sense that it's negative? Yes, the height is decreasing. Um, so we should have a negative number.